What is up guys, it is Tony here and today we're doing a quick little montage editing tutorial where we're going to be talking about how to make Final Cut Pro faster. This isn't exactly something you physically do in the program, this is actually a very cool little tip that I found out the other day when I went to the Apple Store. While well, I was at the Apple, the, uh, the Apple Store the other day, I was playing around with some of the higher end Macs they had there. They had a Mac uh, Pro which had a 6 core processor. They had a iMac with a quad-core desktop grade processor, and they had a MacBook Pro that had a quad-core mobile processor, similar to the one I have here. If you look at my specs real quick, you will see that I have a um, 2.6 gigahertz Intel Core i7. This is actually a mobile version, and it's pretty fast, but it's not exactly the best um, Intel processor you can get right now in terms of Ivy Bridge. Um, the Ivy Bridge processor, that's definitely the top of the line, is the 3770K. And uh, I was playing with the 3770K on the iMac. I was playing with the, um, the, you know, the, the mobile processor on the MacBook Pro, and I was going through Final Cut Pro, and I noticed that the MacBook Pro that I have here is much faster than the, even the 6-core Mac Pro that they had. The 6-core Mac Pro was even slower than the iMac that they had on display. And the 6-core Mac Pro, by the way, it was two 6-core processors. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, not really explaining the full length of it. It is a dual CPU motherboard, and it had two 6-core processors. The, uh, the Mac Pro definitely had a better processor um, overall, but for some reason, the iMac and the MacBook Pro were faster, and including the MacBook Pro I have here. My, my MacBook Pro here was faster than all of them. And the reason why that I really realized after thinking about it for a second is when you went into the specs, all of them had like 4 gigabytes of RAM. So I looked around for a Mac because all the Macs there have different specs. One of the Macs had 8 gigabytes of RAM and I did a little speed test to see which one was quicker. It turns out the, the MacBook or the MacBook Pro or whatever it is, as long as it has more RAM, it tends to render quicker in Final Cut Pro. Now at first this surprised me because you would think that rendering is a CPU intensive um, you know, type of thing, but for some reason the background tasks on Final Cut Pro use a lot of RAM to uh, render. And I think the reason for this is because a lot of the Macs have very low-end CPUs, and for some reason they don't allow you to upgrade to the higher-end CPUs. Um, so my guess is that they try to keep it more based on the high-speed memory that they do provide for the Macs. Which brings me to my point that I think a lot of people out there who want to get more out of Final Cut Pro, who want to render things extremely quick like I do in some of my videos, should go over to Safari or whatever you have, and go to Google, and at Google type in Other World Computing. Just like that. And you'll see this website, MacSales.com. And when you go to MaxSales.com, you'll see it is a website where you can buy memory, solid-state drives, all those types of things. Now, what I would recommend a lot of you guys do, um, or opt to do, is get 16 gigabytes of memory. Now, 16 gigabytes is a little steep. It's $177 at minimum, I believe. Um, but it is relatively affordable. So, if you have a MacBook, for example, and you would like to upgrade, you simply go into MacBook Pro, MacBook or MacBook Pro. And uh, once that opens up, you'll see that you have the option between which year, you know, say you have a 2011 one, go into there. And you will see that you can pick up a 16 gig kit for 179, you can pick up a 12 gig kit for 129, etc., etc. So you have the, um, the option of, you know, going and messing around with these types of um, options and seeing which one's the best for you. If you have a uh, Mac Mini, which I highly recommend upgrading the RAM in a Mac Mini because the Mac Mini is extremely slow. Um, just to start, I would recommend trying to get 16 gigabytes, and it looks like they have 16 gigabyte upgrade kits for about the same price, 180 bucks. So that's not too bad. Um, and if possible, try to get the 1600 megahertz uh, variant. I think for the for the Mac Mini, there's no option of 1600 megahertz unless you have the 2012 model. If you go to iMac, it's the same deal. Let's just go with the uh, current Mac iMac and see what it goes for. Yeah, it's the same. It's all like about 180 bucks. So if you can afford the 16 gigs, get it. If you only have like 4 or 2 gigs in your machine, you at least have to get 8 gigs because, I mean, that's really low. I mean, anything below 8 gigs is probably why Final Cut Pro is not running fast for you. 
Um, other things you could do to make Final Cut Pro slightly faster is probably upgrade to a solid state drive and, and store files on a solid state drive. That is an expensive upgrade because you're probably going to want to go to, once again, Otherworld Computing. And since you're using video files, you're probably going to need a massive hard drive. Now, a massive solid state drive, I mean, let's say like 480 gigs. Um, this is, is this solid state? I don't think this is solid state. I'm not sure what that is. Um, for a solid state drive for like 480 gigs, that's like 434 bucks. So that's kind of expensive, but that's another way to get it a little bit, um, you know, get a little speed boost in your computer. And the other thing you could do is really just buy a new Mac. I mean, if you have a Mac Mini, go online and compare your specs to some used Macs and see if you can find one for a decent price that you can afford and try to sell off your Mac Mini. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I just want to do this video talking about a simple, affordable upgrade to your machine that could really improve your Final Cut Pro um, editing. If you're making money from editing, save up towards it and then go ahead and invest in it because it's well worth it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I am Tony. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like and a comment. And uh, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, go ahead and comment those below. And I'll see you guys next time.